In today's episode, we'll be handling the submission of the form and process submitted data to the database. Behind the curtain, I updated the, the YouTube type. I defined the correct uh, inputs, names, etc. So I add the ID command, ID product, customer name, title, etc., etc. All right. So without in place, let's go ahead and do the form handling. So to do that, we need to go back to YouTube controller where we created the form. And right here, I will do the following. So here I'll do form and here we'll do handle request. So when I do handle request, it will uh, simply do inspect the given request and call if the form was submitted. So we need also to tweak our action. So here we need to pass a request of type request and we type it to request. And there we go. Now we need to pass this request variable to the form submission handler. All right, so with that in place, we can introduce the logic of form handling. All right, <clears throat> sorry. So I will do the following. I will do an if statement and it will contain two uh, conditions. So if the form is submitted, so if the form has been submitted and the form is valid. So we may have some verb, some required inputs inside our form. So we need to make sure that they are valid, they are submitted um, logic to store the data to the db all right now we'll be using doctrine finally so here we we'll start by creating the first variable it's called em that stands for entity manager and i will use the dependency injection mechanism of doctrine to of symphony sorry to get doctrine so do get doctrine and from the doctrine i get the manager right so this will simply um, get, store an instance of the doctrine manager inside this variable that will allow me to deal with the database later now let's prepare the object that will be um, saved to the DB. So here let's call this YouTube command, for example, it will equal new YouTube command. And this is the entity. And from this entity, we'll be storing some information. So YouTube, and I will be using the bunch of setters, set product ID, and it will be taking something here that I will be defining that later. All right, so with this done, now we, <clears throat> we make sure that we define all the fields here. And the next is to persist the data and store it basically to the database. So we can do that through the entity manager that you created here at this line. Persist will take an object of type entity, the entity that we created at the line 35, which is this one. So copy that code. And the next uh, task is to flush the database so here we have two methods that we need to explain the flush and the persist so the persist is like a prepare and here look at this tell the object manager to make an instance managed and persistent but is not persisted to the database to the base sorry and the object will be entered into the database as a result of the flush operation this is why we do the flush so flush it persists like prepare and flush it does finally execute the code that will be injecting this data to the database at this level we can define a success message or flush messages maybe in the next episode or in a coming episode we can introduce this but for now let's test really this and see if it does work so here let me refresh the page to check there is no errors and now if it save, save sorry well we're on into a problem because um we are denying uh the post to be a method for our route because if i go back to the routes here inside my uh, my controller here i have a method set it to get only but here if i do change it to post and I do refresh, this should work, no problems. Okay, so that went well. I need to verify inside the database. So go back to uh, our SQLizer or SQL, whatever it's called, and let's check the content tab and we have a new entry. So this data being saved correctly, but what we need to do next is to save the data that we typed in the form of the one that is hard coded. And this will be the topic of the next episode.